Now I believe we're still not done because now we're getting into more stuff. So in 2019 in Iowa happened again. Members of UI Fiji fraternity face sexual assault allegations. In a petition circulating Monday, members of the University of Iowa's Phi Gamma Delta fraternity were accused of sexually assaulting a student in September, 2020. This was a year ago, one year ago. We're, we're not even, you know, we went from 1989 with the racist shit to literally the past couple, like 2017 to now, pretty much all the instances, there's one death in that time frame, I believe, but the rest of this has been rape. And I'm sure there's more that's not being talked about too. So an online petition describing the alleged sexual assault by members of the University Iowa Phi Gamma Delta fraternity has reached over 40,000 signatures and they're facing allegations from a September 5th, 2020 incident. The chapter was suspended August 25, while the school is investigating the sexual assault. So it says students protested outside the Fiji house on the university campus calling for the chapter to be abolished. And I obviously assume they haven't done fucking shit because it sounds like the schools are perfectly good with letting this shit go on. Another one, University of Nebraska. It seems Nebraska got some problems, okay? Specifically Nebraska Lincoln. Again, here they are again in the news for something else. Oh God. Okay, so the chapter has been suspended again after a member allegedly raped a minor on the night of the first day of classes. This is the incident in place that we're discussing. This is the 17 year old girl that was left on the front lawn. The alleged rape took place at the fraternity's off-campus housing shortly after before 4 a.m. on Tuesday, according to the University of Nebraska Lincoln police, who were also responding to a call about a wild party, according to the police's daily crime log. The alleged offense happened sometime overnight. All allegations of sexual assault are taken seriously and investigated to the extent possible. We are continuing to investigate the circumstances surrounding this incident. A suspect has been identified and Fiji members are cooperating with the investigation. And of course, Fiji did not respond for content. UNLPD chief Hassan Ramsa told the university student run newspaper, The Daily Nebraskan, that the alleged assault involved a 17 year old female student and a 19 year old male student who is a member of the fraternity. And the identity of the victim has not been released. So this is the recent one that, like this is what I started seeing the TikToks about and I didn't know what was happening. This is what happened. Rape is bad. Rape of a minor is like next level terrible. And UNL investigates reports of harassment during Women's March. Phi Gamma Delta, also known as Fiji, shouting no means yes and other harassing comments towards participants as they march past the fraternity house located across the street from the Nebraska Union towards the Nebraska State Capitol building. There's that for you. Um, They also, demonstrators reported hearing members shout, build the wall. Okay, I heard them yelling, no means yes from the balcony. And we responded by chanting, no means no. Uh, The statement concludes that as universities of UNL, OFSL is committed to the standards of civilized behavior and demonstrating the best qualities of a Husker, which I guess is their university Thing. You're a you're a corn husker, I guess, if you go to the University of Nebraska. That's it just okay, here's an update. Okay, so here's a statement from Phi Gamma Delta. Take this with a grain of salt, because apparently they were yelling out no means yes at a rally about not being wanting to be raped anymore. Uh, they said Phi Gamma Delta fraternity takes seriously the allegations regarding behavior of some of our members at our chapter at the University of Nebraska Lincoln during the recent women's march. The behavior has been, the behavior that has been alleged is contrary to the values of our organization. So glad that that's contrary to the values of your organization because it seems like y'all really haven't done shit for like over 30 years at this point. They look like they've been totally fine. That's insane to me. And of course they're just gonna keep trying to sweep it under the rug. Now for this next section of information, I'm actually gonna just, I'm going to share with you a personal retelling. And the reason why I'm not showing anything on the screen is because I'm, I've promised this person their privacy, but they have a personal interaction. It's someone that's actually close to me. They have a really bad interaction with Fiji and they said I could share their story. Some of the fraternities did have a sense of elitism against other houses. Fiji on my campus was known for being nerds or as one person pointed out last year, stereotypical nice guys. They were also less involved with greater Greek life. They were notorious for not participating in Greek-like events or having the least turnout unless there was food. Their house was the only frat house owned by the school, so they couldn't have alcohol in their house. The school also maintained their house, so it was one of the nicer, cleaner frat houses. 
Their members used to say that they were the safe place for women to hang around. I used to hang out there a lot. And while you couldn't get drunk in their houses, it didn't mean you couldn't get raped or sexually assaulted. I was sexually assaulted by one of their members in their house, a place I had made friends and hung out for three years. I could no longer stand to go back to. When the same member ended up assaulting another girl, all the president of the chapter did was revoke his chapter privileges. The president never gave the chapter a vote to remove the member from the frat, even through several members were pushing for that member to leave. This came out when I had anonymously posted the story of my assault on a call out Instagram page for my university. That is when the full story of the other assault finally came out. I would like to point out that I was friends with the chapter's president for three years and my assaulter. I confronted the president about him taking away the guy's chapter privileges, but he got defensive since I technically wasn't supposed to know chapter business. The president did know I was assaulted by the same person. I told him not long after it happened. I was so hurt the president didn't do more and was continuing to go out and party with my assaulter. I cut my friendship with the president then. When some alumni found out they start, they stated they hadn't removed members for less and were appalled that the offender wasn't. I haven't heard anything after some alumni claimed that they were looked into and punished the executive members who let the members stay in the chapter. You can still find the posts on the Instagram page, CSM survivors. That's the statement they gave me. This person, this friend of mine was assaulted by someone at CSM in the Fiji chapter, and they brushed that shit under the rug until literally this dickhole did it again. And people wonder like why rapes don't get reported and stuff like that. If you know that it doesn't fucking matter what happens to you, does it matter going through the trouble and the pain of having to retell what happened to you? I don't think so. And she tried everything she could and it doesn't matter. And literally another girl, same fucking rapist. And these people think it's okay. And the truth is, these fraternities and this behavior and all this kind of stuff, this is gonna continue. They like, unless someone takes serious fucking action against this, this will not end. This will not stop. And these fraternities seem, well, at least this specific fraternity, it's, it just doesn't matter to them. They're just gonna sweep it under the rug and then keep it stepping until yet another girl comes forward again people don't realize that how common something like this is. And if you leave a group of people who believe that this mindset is okay, these stories will keep happening. And is it okay to allow people to be hurt like this consistently and systematically by a fraternity? So this leads me to obviously the final question here, right? Which is what do we do with them, right? What do we do with with Fiji? My personal opinion, which I feel many of you are probably sharing, is they should be banned. Look at their history. This entire fraternity, Fiji, I think they should absolutely be dismembered and banned piece by piece. It's clear that the actions of many throughout multiple decades of this fraternity have allowed this behavior to continue. College Weekly, a YouTube channel, Hold the fuck up. Apparently did a house tour of Fiji. It says, we're back. Remember MTV Cribs? Well, we took that concept to college with our marquee series, Trending Houses. And we are here to present Fiji at the University of Kansas. I don't know if I want to look at this considering like people probably have been raped or will be raped inside that. Let me see this one. All right, let's go take a look at this. So this was from a week ago. This is a Phi Gamma Delta protest. Protesters gathered on Tuesday, August 31st to remove Phi Gamma Delta Fiji from campus. University of Nebraska Lincoln students have spent multiple nights protesting Fiji following an alleged sexual assault. The University of Iowa chapter also faces sexual assault allegations amidst outcry against the fraternity. This comes from the Daily Iowan. Let's take a look at that. Turn this up. All right. A lot of protesters. So this is an online petition with over 80,000 signatures as of Tuesday night describes an alleged sexual assault by members of Fiji. 
anything but yes means no. just chanting fuck Fiji which is pretty fair honestly fuck Fiji no means no no means no no means no fuck you would think that in 2021 this was this would not be happening anymore look at that Look at that on the building too. Someone spray painted rapists on there, which isn't a lie really. Apparently when we were looking through the news sources, this is a systemic issue. I'm happy that people are finally fucking angry enough to say something. Good for these protesters. Look at this. I do not know who that person is. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just throwing shit at them. Fuck them, honestly. I, I did like that poster, the if you aren't angry, you aren't paying attention. And that's true. You should be angry about this. It looks like they broke a window. Oh my God, apparently they got the front door open. And, and you know what makes me kind of laugh in a real just messed up way about all of this is everyone protesting. There's like, there, you could have been more peaceful. You could have been this, you could have been that. Well, I just went through like 30 years of this specific fraternity, literally not giving a shit about the life of anybody or their bodily autonomy. So I'm struggling to understand the problem here when like people have been peacefully like, hey, don't, don't do this. And they're just like, mm, what if we kept doing it anyway? It's like that's a photo board, I think, of like all their members, maybe of their chapter that are active right now. It looks like they're kicking the shit out of that. I'm going to take a look at one more video. And we're going to be done with Fiji. And this one's going to come from Inside Edition. And it is plainly titled, Fraternity Member Allegedly Raped 17-Year-Old. Hundreds of college students swarmed a frat house after a frat brother allegedly raped a 17-year-old sorority girl. And this, again, for anyone in and out on this, happened, is this two weeks ago now? This is two weeks ago. It happened at the University of Nebraska. The fraternity is Phi Gamma Delta, but it's more commonly known as Fiji, and it has a notorious reputation. Concerned. Yeah, no shit has got a notorious reputation. We just looked at that. I Again, I stand that Fiji as a fraternity, they're, they're done. Students are demanding the frat be closed permanently. An online petition to ban Fiji graphics has already garnered more than 210,000 signatures. I think that they should be banned. At least this chapter should be banned from the UNL campus. Um... And we, we plan to protest every night until so. The soror Good. Good. Good job, Bailey. The students gathered bellowed out the suspect's name for the entire campus to hear. We are not playing the audio because no arrests have been made. We are closing the fraternity house and suspending operations, the school chancellor oh. announced. Well, that's good. That's, okay, that's a start. The fraternity says they take the allegations very seriously and are cooperating with authorities. They also say they are prepared to take immediate and appropriate action pending the investigation. That is a good point. Who said that? Brock Turner? Do you guys remember Brock Turner? Nothing fucking happened. That's what the fuck happened was absolutely fucking nothing. There's Brock Turner. 
Back in 2015, Brock Turner became an internationally known name after he was caught sexually assaulting the 22-year-old Chanel Miller, referred to as Emily Doe in court documents. She was unconscious on the Stanford University campus where Brock was a 19-year-old student athlete at that time. Fortunately, two graduate students had intervened and held him until police arrived. His criminal case, formerly known as the People of the State of California versus Brock Allen Turner, was internationally publicized. I don't know. Uh-oh. Uh oh, they attended a fraternity party. Yep, nope, I absolutely fucking think my statement stands. All fraternities have got to go. Got to fucking go. I think that's where I'm gonna end the stream.